Someone had a question related to grinding of the teeth at night. Could it be a vitamin deficiency? And the answer is yes, it could be. And that vitamin deficiency is vitamin D. Now, what is the association between grinding of the teeth, bruxism, and vitamin D? Well, there are so many sleep disorders, including sleep apnea, and different uh, types of insomnia, including cramps in your feet at night that are related to low levels of vitamin D. Now, it could also mean that you're deficient in calcium or magnesium. Now, if you're gonna take calcium, make sure you don't take too much. If you take too much, it can actually create the same symptoms as a calcium deficiency, which I will do a video on that. So it might be a good idea to take a small amount of calcium or just get your calcium from food. Now, also, vitamin D deficiency is also associated with anxiety. So if you're trying to sleep at night, uh, with a vitamin D deficiency, the anxiety alone can cause you to grind your teeth. So a simple solution to find out if this is the cause of your problem is just take about 10,000 IUs of vitamin D3 uh, at dinner time and just make sure that that dinner also includes a little cheese so you get your calcium and then see if you observe any improvements with grinding the teeth. Now the difficult thing about this is to know if you are grinding your teeth less because you're usually sleeping and you don't even know you're grinding your teeth. So you're going to have to figure that one out. There is some good data to show that vitamin D deficiency is associated with bruxism. Let's talk about vitamin D in skin type. And when I'm talking about type, I'm talking about the pigment in your skin. The pigment is generated by melanin. And melanin, the pigment, has an interesting function of acting as a filter for UV light. So it actually prevents UV light. And it also prevents the harmful rays that can cause cancer. So the more melanin you have in your skin, the more protected you are from skin cancer. Now, the largest organ in the body is the skin. It has about 22 square feet, okay? It's about eight pounds. So it's actually quite large. When we get into the types of skin, you have type one and two, you have type three, and you have type four, five, and six. So in this type, you have people that have like a fair complexion, people that are redheads, Russians, Scandinavians, and people that live in high latitude, which means further away from the equator. And then type three, you have the middle latitude, which is slightly lower. We have Americans and Central Europeans, okay? Then you have type four, five, and six, which is the subtropical or the tropical, they're closer to the equator. And so they're going to have more sun exposure. And this group in includes Asians, Indians, Latino Americans, African Americans, Africans. And so the darker the skin, the more melanin, the more natural sunscreen they have, the less UVs that are going to penetrate the skin. But here's the catch-22. People in this group that have a less risk of getting skin cancer also have a greater risk of being vitamin D deficient. So they would need between three to five times more vitamin D than this group. So even though this group can absorb more vitamin D, they have a higher risk of getting skin cancer. And so the darker the skin, the more vitamin D you need to consume or be exposed to from sun. Normally the sun gives you UV radiation, which hits the skin. And depending on how much pigment you have will determine how much pre-vitamin D you're going to get, which is made from cholesterol. This inactive pre-vitamin D needs to be activated through the kidneys or the liver. But also realize that if there is damage to your liver, whether you have a fatty liver, it's inflamed, or you have cirrhosis, or you have kidney damage because you're diabetic, it never gets converted. So when you get tested and it shows normal, that doesn't actually tell you the active form because most tests check the inactive vitamin D, not the active version. Because if you have a fatty liver or you have some type of a problem with your kidney and you keep checking your vitamin D and it's normal, chances are you, it might not be normal. So there's a big association between liver damage or kidney damage and low vitamin D levels. Now, there's a really cool test that I recommend. It's a home kit that you can get to measure your vitamin D levels. It's not that expensive. I recently called a company and I asked them if they would give my followers a discount. 
And I don't get any kickbacks. I get no percentage of this. So what they agreed to do is to give all my followers 20% off this test if you're interested. So you would just type in this coupon code, Dr. Berg 20, and I put the link down below. They'll send you a kit. You take a drop of blood, you put it in this little piece of paper, send it in, and they'll give you your results. They also have some other additional testing like omega-3 fatty acid testing. They can check your DHA. And I think just a few more tests. So you'll see it on their website. All right, thanks for watching. So let's talk about the evolution or the origin of vitamin D. It's quite fascinating. Phytoplankton has been on this planet for about, I don't know, 750 million years. It's been unchanged. And um, phytoplankton exposes itself to sunlight and makes vitamin D. Now there's a compound in the environment called squalene. It's an ancient molecule. It's an oil that lives between rocks by the seashore. Uh, plants make it, animals make it, but it's a precursor to cholesterol and steroid hormones. Now I'm not going to get into the complex biochemistry of this, but all you need to know is that that's like the raw material that eventually turns into vitamin D because vitamin D comes from cholesterol. Now, originally phytoplankton uses certain things from the sun's rays to create different chemicals within the uh, living organism itself. And one of the problems way back on this planet is that we didn't have an ozone layer. So back then, without the protection of the ozone layer, there was quite a bit of damage that was created from this UV radiation. And so organisms experience DNA damage. So somehow vitamin D was created to protect the organisms from developing damage from this UV radiation from the sun. And so as time went on, this mechanism was transferred up the food chain, first into fatty fish, as you know, salmon has a lot of vitamin D, and so does cod liver oil. And so life forms took advantage of a very abundant mineral called calcium. And so they use calcium for neuromuscular communication, cellular communication, using calcium in their skeletal structure to make it very, very hard, like cement, as well as an electrolyte in the communication of nerves and the contraction and relaxation of muscles. As you know, if you don't have enough calcium, you get a lot of muscle spasms. And this is why in our own bodies, if you're deficient in calcium, you're gonna get low back tightness, spasm, and pain. And so one of the most important functions in both animals and humans in relationship to vitamin D is calcium absorption and the utilization of calcium. In the small intestine, vitamin D helps absorb calcium by 20 times. So without that vitamin D, you're not gonna absorb calcium and you can have a lot of problems. Osteoporosis, osteopenia, osteomalacia, which is your bones become soft. And if a pregnant mother is deficient in vitamin D, that child is going to be deficient in calcium and potentially could have scoliosis, flat feet, hunchback, swayback, and even rickets in which the legs are kind of bowed. And so I've done a lot of videos on vitamin D in relationship to your immune system, acting as an anti-inflammatory, helping prevent autoimmune diseases. But the big function of vitamin D is in what it does to calcium. And so if you're deficient in vitamin D, your bones aren't gonna work. Calcium will also accumulate on the inside of your arteries, in your joints is arthritis. It can even increase risk of heart attacks and vitamin D also works with vitamin K2 as well. We don't want to forget that. And so just as uh, photosynthesis occurs in plants, we also have a type of photosynthesis that converts the sun not into energy in our bodies, but into vitamin D, which actually is not really a vitamin. It's a hormone. Now, if you haven't seen my other videos on vitamin D, I put them up right here. Check them out.